Find Familiar is a first level spell which allows you to summon a familiar animal to help you out, which lasts basically until it dies. And having a familiar is such great utility that it's easily one of the best first level spells in the game. And in this list we'll be going over which are some of the best familiars to pick up with the Find Familiar spell. And at number 10 we have the Octopus. This is definitely the best option if you need an aquatic creature, as one of the most useful features of a familiar is its ability to scout. And the Octopus is an excellent underwater scouting tool, as it has the underwater camouflage trait, which gives it advantage on its stealth check while it's underwater. In addition to having a plus 4 to its stealth score, it also has an ability called Ink Cloud, which allows it to heavily obscure a 5 foot area for 1 minute, which then allows it to use the dash action as a bonus action to run away. And while there is a rule that familiars are not allowed to attack, attack is a specific thing in D&D, which means something that requires an attack roll on the d20. So Ink Cloud is perfectly usable by rules as written, as well as anything else that doesn't require an attack roll specifically. Now, another benefit of the octopus, in case you don't want to use it underwater, is that the octopus has 30 feet of dark vision, and one of the traits of the Find Familiar spell allows you to see through your familiar senses, at the cost of making you blind and deaf. Although those are the only detriments to yourself, which means you can just wear the octopus on your head and give yourself night vision goggles in case you don't have dark vision. And at number 9 we have the spider. The spider is just another scouting tool, except the useful place to use a spider is inside dungeons or cave, which coincidentally is where a lot of D&D campaigns will end up eventually, and kind of the place where you'd want to scout the most. So you can just have your spider familiar go in and squeeze through all the doors in order to scout at everything for you, as most creatures won't try to attack the spider as long as the spider doesn't attack them. Although if you do require a stealth roll to sneak around, the spider does have a plus 4 for its stealth, and the ability to spider climb on ceilings, which makes it harder to see in some cases. The spider also has 30 feet of dark vision, so if you just put on your shoulder or your head you can kind of do the same trick as the octopus, and use it as night vision goggles. And at number 8 we have the bat. The bat has 60 feet of blind sight, and blind sight allows you to see invisible creatures, so getting this out to a range of 60 feet is really good. Some of the best blind sight you can get. And that's kind of the benefit of the bat. It's also a flying creature, so it's easier to maneuver and keep it out of danger in battles, and if you need to use it to do perception checks, just as long as you mention it's using its hearing only, it will have advantage for looking for things with its and also remember, while the bat does have the negative trait called echolocation, where it can't use blind sight while deafened, the bat is not blind past its blind sight, so it has normal vision past 60 feet. Unless the creature specifically says that it's blind past its blind sight, then you can just assume it has normal vision in addition to that blind sight. And at number 7 we have the raven. This is another flying creature with slightly higher movement speed than the bat, having 50 feet of flying speed instead of only 30, and the raven has a special ability called mimicry, which allows it to mimic simple sounds, with the trait of the fine familiar spell allowing you to speak telepathically with your raven, as long as it's within 100 feet of you, you can use the raven in order to give simple messages, like if you need to speak to give the all clear to your companions from a long distance, or just send a very short message, which is definitely up to your DM if they would allow the raven to talk at all. Even if they don't allow it to talk at all, you can just assign simple messages to various noises that it can make, and the utility of having something that can communicate is pretty useful. However, definitely the best feature of the Raven is its RP potential. There isn't really a better familiar you can summon than the Raven if you want to play an edgy character. And at number 6 we have the Owl. Out of all of the default familiars you can summon, the Owl is definitely the best one. In addition to the owl being good at scouting, as it can give you a bird's eye view of something from the air, as well as just being good at stealth with its plus 3 to its stealth modifier, and having one of the highest fly speeds at 60, it's also the most useful in actual combat. Now, familiars can't attack, but they can do pretty much anything else, which does include performing the help action, which simply requires the familiar to go into melee range of an enemy creature, and then that creature will be distracted long enough for the next attack roll against them to have advantage. So the owl can go in and give advantage to one target once per its turns. Now all familiars can do this, but it usually puts them in danger because of how incredibly weak they are. The owl, however, has the flyby trait, which allows them to not provoke attacks of opportunity when it flies out of an enemy's reach. And with its impressive 60 feet of movement, it can fly into an enemy, perform the help action, and then fly out without getting hit. It also has a really good passive perception for Familiar at 13, and advantage on perception checks as long as you use its hearing or sight, which again adds to its scouting capabilities. The Owl is so good for the default option 
that you really can't go wrong in almost any situation picking the owl, unless you're like literally underwater. However, be warned, some DMs do not like it when you constantly give advantage with your familiar ones per turn, so they might target the owl more often if you use it for its excellent combat advantage. And at number 5 we have the Imp. Warlocks with the Pact of the Chain feature are allowed to summon the Imp as a special option, instead of one of the original defaults. It also allows you to choose three other creatures, but of the four special creatures you can choose, the Imp is definitely the best one. The Imp has one of the highest health point values out of all the familiars. It has a 40 feet of fly speed, a ton of resistances and two immunities, dark vision out to 120 feet, as well as devil sight and magic resistance. In addition, it can give itself permanent invisibility, just as long as it doesn't attack or lose its concentration. It can also transform into three different beasts that look like normal animals, in case you need the Imp to go incognito. The Pact of the Chain Warlocks can also attack with their familiars, and the Imp also has one of the strongest damage dealing attacks for a familiar, although it's still not very good and not really worth bothering with past early levels. So if you're going Pact of the Chain Warlock, most of them just pick up the Imp because it's one of the best options. But the other three special options are all better than the default familiar options as well, so you do have some leeway if you want to pick one of the other ones for more flavorful reasons. And at number four, we have the Tressia. Now, for the top four spots, we're going to go over beasts that have a special distinction that says they can be summoned from the Find Familiar spell with the DM's approval. So if you can't get the DM's approval, then the best one summoned by the spell's default options would be the number six spot. And the Tressium is one of these non-standard options. This creature can be found in the Storm King's Thunder and Descent into Avernus modules. And in addition to having the distinction where it can be summoned instead of the normal cat option, it also has a lot of really nice benefits over the normal cat. It has a slightly above average health at 5 on average, which is still not a lot, but it also has immunity to poison damage, and 40 feet of fly speed as well as 40 feet of just normal ground speed. But the best thing about the Tressium are definitely its abilities to detect things, as it has a really good passive perception score of 15, and a plus 5 to its perception, so it's a great scout or lookout option, but it also has the Detect Invisibility ability, which just straight up allows it to see invisible targets within 60 feet. It's kind of like the Bant's Blind Sight, but better. It also has Poison Sense, where it can detect if a substance is poisoned by taste, touch, or smell. And since the Tressium is immune to poison damage and the poison condition, it has nothing to worry about if it wants to be a taste tester. It's also very intelligent for a familiar, but it can't speak like the raven. Since you can communicate with it telepathically, this could come in useful, but overall it's not more useful than the raven when it comes to communicating with your allies. It also has a much longer radius of 60 feet of dark vision, so you can use it like night vision goggles if you wanted to sit on your head or shoulders. It's also a really cool cat-like creature with wings, so it won't look as silly as putting an octopus on your head. Although again, the creature does require DM approval, and so do all the other ones at higher spots on this list. And at number three, we have the Gelatinous Ice Cube. This creature is a fine familiar option from the Rime of the Frost Maiden module. The Gelatinous Ice Cube uses the stat blocks of the Oblix Spawn, which is a CR 1 4th creature, which is a little bit higher than the usual CR 0 creatures that familiars are based on. And for being a higher CR rating, the Gelatinous Ice Cube has a hit point value of 18 on average giving it the highest amount of hit points out of all of the familiars, including the Pact of the Tome familiars from the Warlock class. The Gelatinous Ice Cube also has 60 feet of blind sight, so you can use it to see invisible creatures, although it is blind beyond that distance, so it can only see up to 60 feet. And it also has a pretty slow movement of only 20, but it does have the amorphous trait, where it can move through spaces as narrow as one inch without squeezing, so you can kind of use it to go through doors or cracks and walls, which could be situationally useful for maybe retrieving an item you need for a quest. However, the most useful feature of the Gelatinous Ice Cube is definitely its high hit point value while having blind sight. The other stuff is just kind of bonuses with only a few downsides. And at number two, we have the Arctic Stink Squirrel. This creature is a fine familiar option with the Rime of the Frost Maiden module, just like the Gelatinous Ice Cube, and can be summoned in place of the Weasel. And the Arctic Stink Squirrel literally has the same stat block as the Weasel, only with one addition. It gains the ability to use the Stinking Cloud spell once per day with the DC 11. And the Stinking Cloud spell is a third level spell, which occupies a 20 foot radius sphere and makes everything within the cloud heavily obscured. And also creatures that start their turn within this cloud have to make a constitution saving throw, otherwise they basically lose their turn, retching and reeling at the smell. So the Arctic Stink Squirrel can potentially completely control an entire group of enemies with its feature once per day 
as that's a pretty powerful third level spell. However, the DC those creatures need to make is only an 11, and it's constitution, which is easily the worst saving throw to target against the average creature from the monster manual. So chances are they're going to succeed that saving throw. But even if they do, it's still a huge zoning tool which creates a heavily obscured area for one minute, or until your familiar loses concentration on it, or unless they blow it away with a really strong wind. Now, this is definitely the best extra ability you can get from a familiar, and it's kind of overpowered even, when compared to things like an owl, which the best thing you can do is give advantage once a turn. The Arctic Stink Squirrel can kind of change an encounter into your favor with its special ability. And the fact that it's not number one is because the number one spot just has a little bit more utility than just being able to throw out one huge AoE once per day. Although if you don't need the utility of the top spot, then the Arctic Stink Squirrel definitely has the best special ability out of all the familiars. And at number one, we have the Flying Monkey. This creature is a fine familiar option from the Tomb of Annihilation module. Now, the Flying Monkey doesn't have a high health pool like the Gelatinous Ice Cube, some kind of special ability to see poisons or invisible creatures like the Tresium, or an overpowered third level spell it can use once per day. However, the Flying Monkey does have opposable thumbs, which means it can use items. And it's also a small creature instead of tiny. And with a strength score of 8, and the ability to fly, it can situationally carry things. Or even small creatures like a player, character, goblin, or gnome. Now, the Fly Monkey has almost no special features other than pack tactics, which can be pretty useful if you're trying to use your familiar in order to channel one of your touch range spells that deal damage through it, like Shocking Grass. However, because it has the ability to use items with its thumbs, that opens up all kinds of utility that's not really available to other familiars. Besides maybe with a lenient DM with owls and hawks who allow you to use their talons pretty liberally. Here are some benefits of being able to use items on a familiar. If, for example, you gave your familiar a wand of magic missiles, then you have a familiar that can use the spell magic missiles every turn, as magic missiles does not have an attack rule nor require attunement. It can also administer healing potions to downed allies, it can use the Necklace of Fireballs in order to throw out fireballs at enemies. It can be equipped with a Spell Rot tattoo in order to have a spell that doesn't require an attack roll. Same with the Ring of Spell Storing. Remember, the Familiar can do basically anything as long as it doesn't require an attack roll. And the normal limited factor to all the other Familiars is that they realistically can't do these kinds of things because of how small they are and how no thumbs they have besides some of the ones that can be summoned with the Pact of the Chain Warlocks, as imps also have the same benefits as the Flying Monkeys and then some. Although the Flying Monkey is an option for anyone who can use Flying Familiar and not just Pact of the Chain Warlocks. And one of the advantages the Flying Monkey does have over the imp though, is its 120 pound carrying capacity for it being a size bigger than the imp. Creatures that are tiny or smaller have half the carrying capacity as a medium sized creature. Small creatures don't have a negative on their carrying capacity, so with a strength score of 8 and a fly speed of 30 feet and no limitations on its carrying capacity, if you're playing a small light race, you can have the monkey carry you. Since you already need the DM's approval in order to use the flying monkey, you'd probably want to run the flying monkey backpack by your DM before trying to do it though. Although without approval, it can easily use something like a wand of magic missiles, the tattoos, and the necklace of fireball. Although you might need some convincing in order to attune items to it as well. Alright, and that's the list. Obviously, if you're going exclusively rules as written, the owl is the best familiar. And there are other animals which have the tag that allow you to summon them as a fine familiar option. Although most of them aren't better than just the owl, so I didn't put them on the list. As always, if you have any other ideas for future videos similar to this one, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments. And also, don't forget to not subscribe. 